Next, we'll take a look at some of the basics of navigating the user interface. In order to ensure the canvas is centered and visible on the screen, click on the Percentage menu in the Overview panel and choose Fit View. Should the canvas become angled, there's a button here to reset the rotation as well. Right-click and choose Reset. Using a pen or a mouse, you can hover over many of the buttons in Krita and see a tooltip that indicates what each feature is. You'll notice that once I click on a button or menu, it is highlighted in blue. This is how you can tell if a tool, brush, feature, or setting is active or not. Now let's try making some marks on the canvas with brushes. The toolbox has all of the tools that you'll be using here in Krita, and each tool can perform a variety of functions. For example, we can select the freehand brush tool, which tells Krita that we are ready to paint. If the brush tool is not selected, we will not be able to paint on our canvas. Next, let's make sure we have a visible color selected for painting. It's hard to see what you're doing if you're using white paint on a white canvas, so let's choose dark blue for now. This way we can easily see the strokes we're making as we paint. To choose a color, click inside a section of the circular artistic color selector to select a hue and saturation. Next, choose the brightness you want from the strip on the left. If you prefer a more standard way of choosing color, you can toggle to the wide gamut color selector or choose from a palette of swatches. We're going to go more in depth into the color selection options later. You may have already selected a brush, so to make sure we're all working with the same brush, let's go to the brush presets on the left and choose the paint category to filter out only those brushes. I'll choose the basic five size opacity brush, and if I paint a test stroke using firm pressure, I get a fairly simple stroke shape with paint that is flat and opaque. If you're using a drawing tablet, you can control the thickness, opacity, and other properties of your brushes by adjusting the amount of pressure you apply. For example, light pressure will create thinner, more transparent lines, while heavier pressure will result in thicker, more opaque lines. It's worth noting that a mouse doesn't have this capability and can't replicate this effect. Now that we've made a mess on our canvas, let's learn how to quickly clear everything off. Of course, you can use your eraser, but there's a faster way to do it. Simply press delete to clear the contents of the currently selected layer. Now that we are able to paint on our canvas, let's go more in depth into the navigation tools. We'll start with panning the canvas or moving the canvas around your workspace. You can do that in a number of different ways. The first is to use the overview panel. You may need to expand it vertically. When you click and hold with your mouse or tap and hold with your pen on the thumbnail of your canvas, you can drag to reposition it. Another way to pan is to hold down the space bar on a keyboard. That will toggle your cursor to the pan mode, allowing you to move the canvas. Releasing space bar returns you to whatever tool was previously selected. If you're using a touch capable device, you can also press down with two fingers and drag your canvas to pan it around. Try to avoid twisting or rotating your fingers because it will rotate your canvas. If that happens and your canvas is askew, you can right-click in the overview panel to return the canvas to its upright position. There are also options under Settings Configure Krita Canvas Input Settings to customize touch recognition if you don't want it to affect the rotation of the canvas. Multi-touch can be temporarily disabled using a switch or a button on your tablet, so if it's not working, be sure to check that. Next, let's take a look at zooming in and out of the canvas. We can do that in a number of different ways. First, I can do it with the menu and slider in the overview panel. Another way to do it is to hold Control plus spacebar on your keyboard and click or tap and drag left or right or up and down on the canvas. This will let you focus on a target area. This method utilizes scrubby zoom, which lets you zoom in and out very fluidly. The other modes zoom to specific increments. Another way to zoom in increments is to use the keyboard shortcuts of plus and minus. You're not limited to navigating with your keyboard, you can also use the express keys on your tablet to invoke these tools and commands. I'll explain how to use express keys later in this lesson. We can also zoom using touch gestures by spreading two fingers apart to zoom in, or bringing two fingers closer together to zoom out. There are also options in the overview panel to fit the image on the screen and zoom the canvas to 100%. 100% means the canvas is not zoomed in or zoomed out. And after zooming in, you can drag the box over the thumbnail to focus on specific areas of your painting. To rotate the canvas, you can use the overview panel or the shortcuts. Hold shift plus spacebar, then drag to rotate the canvas around a central axis. 
Likewise, you can also press 4 or 6 to rotate in increments. 5 will reset the rotation. You can also manually set the rotation angle from the overview panel. For example, you could rotate the canvas 45 degrees. You can also use touch to rotate the canvas by twisting two fingers. You may accidentally paint while touching with one finger, so you may want to disable that in the Krita preferences under General Tools. Once you have mastered these navigation tools, it's quite easy to manipulate your view of the canvas. If you have a drawing tablet, it may come with express keys. These are buttons that are built into the device and can be customized to perform keyboard shortcuts and execute commands within Krita. They can be a useful tool for streamlining your workflow and for saving time. I'm using the Cintiq 27 QHD Touch, which comes with the Wacom Express Key Remote. If I open the Wacom Tablet Properties, I can click on the Express Key Remote, or whichever device that I want to configure. It's very important that you make a note of which application that you're assigning commands to. By default, All Other is selected, which is a global setting for all applications. That global setting can be overridden by adding specific applications. Once you choose a specific application, you can have different shortcuts for each individual application. To add an application, click on the plus button. I'll choose the Krita application so that the functions I program will apply only to Krita. Then I'll click on Krita to activate it. I won't go into detail about how to set this up, but you can experiment to determine which tools and commands you use frequently enough to justify assigning them to an express key. Your pen may also have buttons that you can assign shortcuts to. These buttons are usually located near the tip of the pen. Typically, pens have one, two, or three buttons. To give you an example, you could program one of these pens to act as the eraser, allowing you to erase by holding down the pen button. Next, I want to discuss some of the panels that are floating here on in our interface. We can have individual panels floating on our screen like this, or we can have these panels grouped together in different ways. Panels, or dockers as they're referred to in Krita, can be collapsed so that they take up less space on the screen, or they can be opened when it's time to access the contents within. You can drag panels around and reposition them by dragging from the top bar of the panel. If the panel has an X and you click on it, you'll close the panel. You can restore panels from Settings Dockers. I'll restore the overview panel. You can navigate between the different panels that are grouped together by clicking on the tab. Many panels also have one or more options buttons that can customize the panel contents. Panels can be docked together on the sides of the UI, but not when they are free floating. You can even dock panels on the top and bottom of the UI. To resize panels and reveal more or less of their contents, drag from the sides or corners of the panel. Some panels have content that will scale in relation to the panel. The color selector is one such example. As I mentioned earlier, panels can even be locked if you're concerned about accidentally moving the panels while you're drawing. You can unlock the panels with the same button. Another way to navigate is to use the pop-up panel. You can access this whenever the brush tool is selected by right-clicking on the canvas. On the outside are controls to rotate the canvas and zoom. There are more controls here that we will explore later. I'm using a fairly large display, which allows me to keep a wide view of my canvas while still having room for multiple panels. Your workflow may require even more panels, in which case it can be helpful to hide the interface so that you only see the canvas. You can do this by pressing Tab on your keyboard. This removes a lot of the distractions and allows you to focus on your painting. If you want the panels to return, press Tab again. It's easy enough to press tab on your keyboard, but you can also set an express key to show and hide the UI. If you want to squeeze a tiny bit more room out of Krita's UI, you can enter full screen mode from the view menu, and that will hide the application bar near the top of the screen. This can be useful if you're concerned about accidentally closing the application or removing the window. To exit full screen mode, you'll have to click on it again in the view menu, or you can use the Control shift f keyboard shortcut to make it easier to invoke. Those were the basics of navigating the UI in Krita. In the next lesson, I'll give you an overview of how to select brushes.